thought I'd surprise Michael and Jim with a cake for their anniversary party. So it's one and three quarters a cup of flour. I'm gonna sift all the dry ingredients together. Two cups of sugar. I'm gonna sift them right into the bowl, mixing bowl. And since it's a chocolate cake with chocolate buttercream, it's got three quarters of a cup of cocoa powder, dark chocolate cocoa powder. Mm, smells so good, so chocolatey. Okay, one teaspoon of baking powder, two teaspoons of baking soda, it helps it rise. One teaspoon of salt. I'm just gonna sift all these together. So the method of this cake is to sift all the dry ingredients together <laughs> in a cloud of chocolate. And then I'm gonna slowly mix the wet ingredients into it. Okay, that's the dry ingredients. I'm just gonna mix them on the mixer until they're combined. Okay, now for the wet ingredients. The first thing is a cup of buttermilk. I always shake it because it does settle. Make sure it's well mixed. So I'm gonna do it in a measuring cup. It'll be easier to pour into the cake batter. So I need one cup of buttermilk, half a cup of vegetable oil, two eggs. Just beat the eggs a little bit. Right into the wet ingredients. I use extra large eggs. One teaspoon of good vanilla, really important when you're doing chocolate. Okay, I'm just gonna combine these. And then with a the mixer on low, I'm just gonna put it into the dry mixture. And then I have a secret ingredient. Or I should say Michael's grandmother had a secret ingredient. This recipe calls for a cup of hot brewed coffee. And I always think coffee is really important for chocolate. It makes it taste really chocolatey, and that's exactly what this does. Right into the mixture. I've got two eight inch cake pans. I lined them with parchment paper, butter and flour. pressure's on, it has to be good because Michael knows exactly what it is. He actually served this cake to me once at dinner and I just begged him for the recipe. I didn't have to beg very hard. I'll make sure they're pretty equal size. Okay, into the oven, 350 degrees for 35 to 40 minutes and then we're gonna cover it with the easiest, most delicious buttercream you've ever seen. So I'll chop up six ounces of really good semi-sweet chocolate. I'm just gonna melt the chocolate in a bowl that I've set over simmering water. In the meantime, I'm gonna start the rest of the buttercream. So I need two sticks of butter, half a pound, at room temperature. I'm just gonna beat that on medium speed. Okay, the next thing I need is one extra large egg yolk and a teaspoon of good vanilla extract. Okay, I think the chocolate's gonna be ready by now. Let's see. Take this off the heat and just let the chocolate cool while I turn the cakes out. Just add it to the butter and vanilla. So I've got two teaspoons of hot water. I'm just gonna put in a tablespoon of instant coffee powder, which is a very intense coffee. Just melt this together and pour it into the buttercream. And I'm just gonna whip it for a minute. Make sure it's really well blended. I'm gonna turn it on low and add all this gorgeous chocolate. The chocolate's actually cooled now a little bit. You don't wanna pour hot chocolate into butter, otherwise the whole thing will melt. Mm. You can really smell the chocolate and the coffee together. A little hint of vanilla. And that's Michael's grandmother's chocolate buttercream. Icing a cake, just go over it very gently, start from the top and work your way down the sides. Okay, so now I've got buttercream on all sides of the cake. I'm just gonna go up and down the sides. And good news about an old fashioned cake is it's supposed to be a little messy. And then I'm just gonna smooth the top 
just sort of big swirls. I can't wait for dessert. Starting with a light and airy tres leches cake with mixed berries and whipped cream. It's the dessert of your dreams. Tres leches cake is a Mexican dessert. It's very unassuming, but so delicious. It's a cake that's been soaked with a mixture of three milks. That's the tres leches part. And I'm gonna start making the mixture. So first I need one and a quarter cups of heavy cream. This is really kind of a combination between a cake and a pudding. It's so delicious. Okay, next I'm gonna put in a 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. You're not gonna believe how much liquid goes into this cake. And a 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. That's basically milk, but it's been condensed with sugar added. Okay. Next is some almond extract, half a teaspoon. Mm, I love the almond flavor with this. And the seeds of a vanilla bean. And run my knife right down the middle and scrape out the seeds. Vanilla and almond are so good together. I think they're kind of classic Mexican flavorings for dessert. Wow, there are a lot of seeds in this. You can just see right there. I'm just gonna whisk these together. So that's the tres leches part. Now I'm gonna get the cake. This is the cake I'm gonna pour the tres leches over. Let me show you how I made it. I put three extra large room temperature eggs into the bowl of an electric mixer fitted with a paddle attachment. Added one cup of sugar, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and beat everything together on high speed for 10 minutes until it was light yellow and fluffy. Meanwhile, I put one and a half cups of all-purpose flour into a sifter with two teaspoons of baking powder and three quarters of a teaspoon of kosher salt and sifted it all together. Then I reduced the speed of the mixer to low and slowly added half the flour mixture. Poured in half a cup of whole milk, the remaining flour, and then turned the mixer off. Finally, I mixed the batter with a rubber spatula just to make sure it was well combined. Poured it into a buttered nine by 13 by two inch baking pan, smoothed the top, and put it into a 350 degree oven for 25 minutes. Then I took the cake out and let it cool on a baking rack for 30 minutes. So now I've got the cake, it's cooled, but still a little bit warm, and I'm gonna poke it with holes with a skewer, but not the sharp end of the skewer, the blunt end, and lots of holes. And this is gonna allow the milks to really soak into the cake all over. You can take out your aggression on the cake. <laughs> there are actually lots of different cakes that I like that have some kind of syrup absorbed into the cake. It just keeps it moist. The French have baba au rum, which is soaked with rum, always a good idea. But I think this tres leches cake is my favorite. Okay, next the milk. Now, it doesn't sound likely that that's gonna go into the air, but trust me, it does. Just do it evenly and slowly. And then later, I'm gonna serve a square of it with fresh berries and whipped cream. Does that make it cuatro leches? See, as it sits a little bit, you can see it's being absorbed. That's the reason why I do the holes with the blunt end of the skewer, so they make bigger holes. Okay, that's the whole thing. Isn't it amazing how much milk has gotten into the cake already? I'm gonna refrigerate this for six hours, but I have one to show you that's already done. Isn't this gorgeous? Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is a little powdered sugar. I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it. I think a lot of people take the powdered sugar and do it right over the cake, and you end up with a big dollop of powdered sugar. So what I do is I just put a little bit in a sifter, not over the cake, and then lightly dust it. And then it's really even. Okay, that's the powdered sugar. Next, the berries and cream. So what I have is a bowl of mixed berries, about eight cups. I've added five tablespoons of sugar to it. I'm just gonna let them sit for a minute just so the sugar gets into the berries. And I've got a big bowl of whipped cream and it's make-ahead whipped cream. Let me show you how I do it. I put one and a half cups of cold heavy cream into the bowl of an electric mixer fitted with a whisk attachment, along with a quarter of a cup of confectioner sugar, two tablespoons of granulated sugar, 
and two tablespoons of creme fraiche, which makes the cream stable so it can be made ahead. Then I add a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract and beat it on high speed until it forms soft peaks. And you thought you couldn't make whipped cream ahead, and you can. Okay, I'm gonna pull it all together now. So, I always like a big plate for dessert. So I'm gonna cut the cake in squares. It's really wet and moist. And you know, of course, the first piece is always the hardest to get out, so you'll forgive me if it's not perfect. See how it absorbed all the liquid? It's amazing to me. So, big pile of berries. Right next to it. I love raspberries and strawberries. I'll put them on anything. I love the color and the freshness and the flavor. Okay, and a big dollop of whipped cream, because of course everything's better with whipped cream. Right in the middle. Now, I don't know about you, but this is the dessert of my dreams. It's flavorful, it's fresh, it's got great textures, and it's got whipped cream. That's amazing. Duh, who wouldn't love that? So it starts with a really rich chocolate pudding. So I need three quarters of a cup of sugar, five extra large egg yolks. This is one time they don't have to be room temperature. A third of a cup of cornstarch. You want a really rich, thick chocolate pudding. And a teaspoon of salt. I know it sounds odd to put salt in something sweet, but it really brings out the chocolate flavor. Okay, I'm just gonna mix these together at low speed, just until they're combined. The next thing I need is four cups of scalded milk, which means it's just below the simmering point. You'll see little bubbles right around the edge, and that's when it's perfect. And since it's really hard to pour milk from a pot into a mixer, and it's hot milk, I'm gonna pour it into a measuring cup that has a spout, it's much easier. So I'm just gonna take this and pour it very slowly into the eggs. What I don't wanna do is scramble the eggs. So you want them to warm up really slowly. It's really like making a custard. A really rich, deep chocolate custard. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and pour it back into the pan and cook it for a few minutes just until it's really thick. And then I'm gonna add lots of chocolate. So pour it back into the pan, same pan, you don't have to clean the pan out. Okay, I'm just gonna cook this at a medium-low heat for about five minutes, just until it's really thick. I'll see you on the other side. This looks like it's perfect. You can see it's sort of the consistency of warm pudding. Now I'm gonna turn off the heat, and I'm gonna add lots of chocolate, seven ounces of bittersweet chocolate. Just pour it in, it's just gonna melt right into it. Next is two tablespoons of unsalted butter. I've just diced it up so it melts in. Just give it a little extra richness. And now, because I love coffee and chocolate together, I'm gonna add two things that have coffee flavor. The first one is a tablespoon of coffee liqueur. Just gives it real depth of flavor. And we want lots of flavor. And the second one is instant coffee or espresso, whichever one you like. Whatever you have in the pantry, it doesn't really matter. smells so good. All the chocolate and the coffee together, it's just fantastic. Next thing is to pour it into the crust. And this is my foolproof graham cracker crust. Let me tell you how I made it. I put 10 to 12 graham crackers in the food processor and ground them up. Transferred the crumbs to a bowl, added a quarter of a cup of sugar and three quarters of a stick of melted butter. Stirred the mixture together, poured it into an 11 inch false bottom fluted pie tin. Pressed it gently with a measuring cup into the corners and across the base, making sure the sides and bottom are an even thickness. Then bake the crust at 350 degrees for 10 minutes, then set it aside to cool completely. It's really important to let the crust cool completely so the warm pudding doesn't soak into the crust. So here comes the moment. I'm just gonna pour it in and hopefully it's just the right amount. Ugh, oh, how good does this look? And how good does it smell? And you want it right up to the top. Just smooth it out. 
So I'm just gonna add bananas and whipped cream to this. Now this is my kind of fruit dessert. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put a little plastic wrap, I wanna chill this, but I don't want it to form a skin. So I'm gonna take a piece of plastic wrap and just put it directly on the pudding. And that'll keep it nice and creamy. So just smooth this out, and I'm gonna chill it for six hours, and then I'm gonna put bananas and whipped cream on top. But I happen to have one already chilled in the fridge. This is the chilled pie, and I made some whipped cream. Look how dark and delicious and chocolatey this looks. Wow, I love it. And I've made whipped cream, it's three ingredients, really easy. I poured a cup of cold, heavy cream into an electric mixer. It has to be cold because you can't whip warm cream. Then I added one tablespoon of sugar, a teaspoon of vanilla, turned the mixer to medium high, and whisked it until it just made firm peaks. I've sliced some bananas, two or three depending on how big they are, and I'm gonna put them in concentric circles right on top of the tart. Now that looks pretty good already, but I'm gonna make it even better. So I'm gonna put a layer of whipped cream on top. This is a really earthy dessert. It's very comfort food. This isn't the time to pipe whipped cream. This is the time to just slather it on. And what I wanna do is just push it right to the edge, but I still want you to see the bananas and the chocolate. I think it looks so much better that way. I think we need a little more whipped cream though. Just kind of pile it up. Now, is this the ultimate comfort food or what? Maybe a little extra decoration like shaved chocolate oh. on the top? I've used bittersweet chocolate in the tart, but if I use milk chocolate, if you have a little bit, it's actually easier to shave and make curls. Otherwise, it tends to just end up kind of ground on top. Look how good that looks. Okay, let's see if I'm gonna put it on a cake stand. So, I've got a nice cake stand. And let's see if I can get it out of the tart shell. So this is a false bottom tart shell. So what you do is just take it off and slide it right onto the cake stand. Wow, I don't know that this is everybody's idea of a make-ahead fruit dessert, but you can make a lot of it ahead and it's got fruit in it, right? Works for me. <laughs> so my idea is cinnamon baked donuts. And the good news is they're baked, not fried. And they're so good. So first I'm gonna do the dry ingredients. Two cups of flour. I always use all-purpose flour. Just level it off with your hand. One and a half cups of sugar. That should be about a half. Baking powder. I need two teaspoons of baking powder. You want them to be really light. I'm just sifting this all together when I'm done combining it. One teaspoon of ground cinnamon. These are really good. And they have a cinnamon sugar outside. It's kind of like cinnamon toast. Jeffrey's gonna like these and half a teaspoon of nutmeg. And half a teaspoon of salt. I'm just gonna sift these all together. I don't know, there's something about cinnamon toast that always reminds me of being a little kid when you're sick and that's what your mother makes you. Makes you feel better. I used to make cinnamon muffins in the store, but cinnamon donuts are even better. So next, the wet ingredients. I've got one and a quarter cups of whole milk and I just whisked in one extra large egg. And I've got two tablespoons of butter that have melted and cooled. Just pour it together. This is really easy. It's just wet ingredients, dry ingredients. Combine them. Two teaspoons of good vanilla. My favorite, favorite flavor. I always mix things in a measuring cup because then you can measure and mix at the same time. And a little whisk is one of my favorite things. Okay, wet ingredients, dry ingredients, just combine them. So I'm just gonna pour this right in the middle and then just stir them. I love this recipe because you don't have to fry the donuts. And then not to mention, it's better for you than fried donuts. But in fact, you don't end up with grease all over the kitchen. So this is gonna go into a baking pan and they're just baked in the oven. It's so good. Okay, just stir this just enough. It's kind of like muffins, you don't wanna over mix it just until all the ingredients are wet and there are no lumps. Mm, I can smell the cinnamon and nutmeg, it's fantastic. Okay, that's done. So, baking pans. 
So they're these little mini donut pans. You can usually find them in a store, but if you can't, you can get them online. And I'm just gonna spoon it into these pans, and they come out looking like the most perfect donuts. You don't need a pastry bag. You don't need a deep fryer. Just fill them with a spoon. So these are gonna bake 350 degrees for 17 minutes until they just spring back when they touch them. And then I'm gonna do a cinnamon sugar glaze for them. Oh, they smell so good. Wow. So the easiest way to get these out of the pan, because you want to do it and have them in one piece, is just kind of wrap them on the board a little bit and then turn them out. And if you're lucky, and I am, they all came out. So this is melt some butter, and then I'm gonna make cinnamon sugar. The thing about cinnamon sugar is it has to be just the right combination. You don't want it too sweet and you don't want too much cinnamon in it. If there's too little, it doesn't look like cinnamon sugar. If there's too much, it almost looks kind of burnt. So I find a half a cup of sugar, half a teaspoon of cinnamon is the perfect combination. So the butter's melted, perfect. So this is what I do. I take donut and just dip it really quickly into the butter. You don't want to soak it in. You just want to glaze it. Put it in the cinnamon sugar. Now, how good does that look? They look great. You want one? Do I want one? <laughs> what a question. <laughs> they're baked, they're not fried. Mm. Yeah, is that good? Oh, oh good. Mm. If I have one go-to chocolate cake, this is it. It's chocolate ganache cake, and it starts with a quarter of a pound of unsalted butter, and it has to be at room temperature. One cup of sugar. This cake is amazing because you can make it in almost any size, and it's completely foolproof. I'm just gonna cream these together until the butter's light and fluffy and the sugar is mixed in. So first what I've done is I've buttered an eight inch round pan and it's got a nice high two inch side. And then the question is, how do you get a square piece of parchment paper into a round pan? So take the piece of paper and do it in half and then fold it in half again. Fold it in half again, just as many times as you can just like that, and then you put the tip right where the middle of the pan is and cut off inside the pan like that. And if it's too big, you can just refold it and recut it. And now what I want to do is butter the paper and the pan and flour the whole thing. So I just use the paper the butter came out of. Easy as it can be. A Little bit of flour. And just flour the whole pan the sides and everything. Just make sure you get the whole thing. The butter and sugar is perfectly mixed. It's kind of light and fluffy, and the butter is pale yellow. So now the next thing I want to add is four eggs. Just I'm gonna do it on low speed. And I add one egg at a time, just until it's incorporated. The next ingredient in this cake is the secret ingredient, chocolate syrup. It's a whole 16 ounce can. I'm just gonna pour it right in. Next is a tablespoon of vanilla. It's a lot of vanilla for an eight inch cake, but it really makes it taste great. Okay, and the last ingredient is flour. I'm gonna turn it on low. One cup of all purpose flour. And at this point, I don't wanna over mix it, so I'm just gonna put it in slowly. If you dump it in, you'll end up with lumps, but if you put it in slowly with the mixer on low speed, you'll end up with a delicious cake every time, just until it's mixed in. Mm, I love the smell of this. Okay, I think this is perfectly mixed. Okay, I wanna make sure there are no lumps, no flour. Perfect, I'm just gonna pour it right into the pan. This cake isn't gonna rise very much, so don't worry about it filling the pan. It doesn't have any leavening in it. I'm gonna bake this cake 325 degrees for about 40 to 45 minutes, just until a cake tester comes out clean. And in the meantime, I've actually made not one, but two cakes. I bet you're wondering why. I'm gonna tell you in a second. And I've made chocolate ganache to pour all over the cakes. Look how gorgeous it is. It's so rich and wonderful. Let me tell you how I made it. I poured a cup of heavy cream into a bowl set over a pan of simmering water. I added a pound of semi-sweet chocolate chips, two teaspoons of instant coffee granules to bring out the flavor of the chocolate, and stirred it occasionally while it melted together. In fact, the more you stir it, the shinier it gets. 
Now you're gonna find out the reason why I made two cakes. Lottie Hoyk, who does social media with me, we did a video recently for Instagram of how to do a chevron pattern on a chocolate cake. You made it look very easy, so <laughs> I'm nervous. It was so much fun. So I'm turning the tables on Lottie, and I'm gonna teach her how to do the chevron pattern. So I combined one and three quarters cups of confectioner sugar and about three tablespoons of water. You wanna adjust it a little bit just so you get a really thick pouring okay. consistency. Okay, okay, so now you take a little knife and you use the back of the knife, not, okay. the, not the cutting edge, the back, and you slide it right across, kind of lightly. One more. Yay! I did it! <laughs>